everyone! Today it's time to start setting up a new bullet journal for 2024. I'm so excited to finally open up my new notebook. You might recognize that I chose the same watercolor bullet journal by Mellow Days that I've used for the past six months, but this time we have this beautiful sage green color. This might be the most beautiful notebook I've ever used. And what I love about these journals is that they have a very slightly textured ivory tone paper, which is something I've enjoyed so much. I'll show you just a quick color comparison between my old notebook therapy journal that has bright white paper. So the ivory tone is slightly softer and easier on the eyes. But that's enough about the journal, so now let's open this up and start from the first full spread. I've made quite a few year setups by now, but I've never done anything vintage or almost dark academia inspired. So that's what we're gonna do today. I always like to keep my beginning yearly setups pretty simple. So we are not gonna have any crazy paintings today. We are gonna draw a little bit, but mainly we're gonna use some colored papers and a few other decorating elements that I collected into this one printable page. So I uploaded these two papers on the free section of my shop. So if you have access to a printer, you are able to download and print these for yourself. I have lots of other color palettes and texture papers there by now. And these pictures are all copyright free images. So I hope you guys will enjoy this small scrapbooking starter kit. If you'd be interested in receiving a digital kit like this, but a little bit bigger version every month, I do that on my Patreon. So I'll link that to the video description as well. But anyway, before anything else, I wanted to start by writing these big numbers for 2024. So this whole first spread will be kind of a cover or intro spread to the whole year. We'll use the left page for these big numbers and the right side to write the word of the year. You could absolutely draw these numbers directly to the journal and skip a few steps. But I wanted to do some layering here and it's also a little bit less stressful to draw these big numbers on a separate paper because if you mess up, you can always do it again. I used a 5 cm tall and 3.5 cm wide box as a guideline for each of the numbers. And then before coloring them with the black pens, I sketched them out with a pencil. I don't know why all my black pens were almost out of ink, so that's why they all look extra dry here. But I actually wanted to leave these few white spots on the letters, kind of to make it look like they are stamps. I don't know, I thought it suited the vintage neutral look pretty well. If the edges of your numbers are not completely smooth, it doesn't matter because it's easy to fix when we cut the numbers out of this white paper. And since we need two number twos, it's super easy to get them exactly the same shape by using the first one as a guide to draw the outlines of the second number two. But after that's done and we have all these big numbers on the page, I started to layer some of these brown papers here. And then we're gonna use the same white paper to cut out this Polaroid picture frame shape. I used a paper knife and this cutting board to get out the inner square. I quite recently got this cutting board from Paper World, which is super handy for this purpose and perfectly fits the size of the notebook. Then I tested adding some regular brown craft paper under this, almost to add a shadow to this box. And then I used this one text paper that's from my shop, but I also included a small piece of this in the printable paper that you can use as well. I promise this is the only text paper I'll use in this setup and you could easily just leave it out or use something similar you might have at home. Even a solid color paper in a slightly different tone could work totally fine. 
But after I had tested how everything looked here, I sketched out everything I wanted to write here out of camera. So my word of the year 2024 is peace. And I think for me, this stands mostly for inner peace or maybe finding peace in my life. So I personally really like this idea of choosing a word that I want to have as a guide for the upcoming year and that describes the feeling I want to achieve. I found this quote that I think perfectly captured what I wanted this word to mean. So I wrote, it does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble or hard work. It means to be in the midst of those things and still be calm in your heart. But after the text parts, I drew this simple ink flower branch here. So again, I sketched this out beforehand. You will see that I do that for pretty much everything in my journal, no matter how many years I've been doing this. This is actually a very simple drawing, and I think using a thin pen will definitely help you out. So I didn't really define any of these flowers or leaves that well. There's definitely this messy, scribbly quality to it and overall I wanted to keep this quite minimal so that it would just add a small simple decoration element to the cover spread. we'll finish this whole spread with some final decorations so I decided to cut out a color palette again from the same printed kit and then kind of as a last addition I ended up adding these two random pieces of tracing paper or vellum paper whatever you want to call this frosty looking transparent paper I don't know if it showed up that much and this is definitely something you can skip if you don't have a paper like this at home but I still think it adds such an aesthetic touch to anything so after that I just glued everything to the page and we have the first intro spread all done. But now it's time to move on and something I always like to have at the beginning of my yearly setups is a future log. There are quite a few pages that others might include in their bullet journal setup, like a key page or index or a grid spacing page, but I personally don't really use those. So I just like to include pages that are actually helpful and functional for me. So a future log is a place where you can write any longer term plans. So if you know you need to remember a certain appointment in a few months, but you didn't set up your bullet journal that far, a future log is the place to write those down. I went with this new layout for me. So we are first going to add this same light brown texture paper to the sides and create this small Dutch door flip thingy to the middle. So this will give us a little bit more space and I'll personally only use this journal for the next six months, but I do have space for eight months here. I sometimes find it very frustrating when I'm getting close to switching to a new journal and I have no place to write down something in the next few months because my future log doesn't go that far. So that's why I decided to include July and August here as well. And if you personally like to set up your journal for the whole year, just add one extra page here in the middle and you're good to go. We're going to write all the calendar details to these craft paper squares and this is definitely something you could use stamps or stickers for. I decided to write everything on this spread by hand just to show you that it's possible and that you don't need to get all these fancy extra tools to use a bullet journal. Writing everything by hand will take much more time though and it's quite tedious to write all these small numbers. So if your goal is to save time and get everything set up with as little effort as possible, maybe looking into some stamps or stickers might be beneficial for you. I usually don't need the full page just for the future appointments, so I like to combine the future log with some monthly statistics. And this time I also added this memory section where I can hopefully write one memorable moment from each month. 
The stats I track are mainly social media related. However, there were quite a few months last year that I didn't write these out just because I'm honestly not so interested in following my social media numbers anymore. So we'll see if this will continue to the next journal or not. I actually forgot that I don't need the stats for the last two months because I'll be using a new journal by then. So I covered them with a small piece of the same notebook paper I stole from one of the cutout pieces. And instead I thought we could add some simple decorations here in the last corner. I ended up choosing these two small pictures of the paper kit here, but before attaching them, I wanted to scribble just a few flower branches around this space. Again, I used one of my thin micron pens to do this, which helps to create very delicate and wispy strokes. If you don't want to use any pictures in this theme, I think you could totally draw similar small flower branches to the other pages as well. But sometimes I think using ready-made pictures makes things super easy. I usually don't use this approach in my bullet journal and I probably won't in the monthly themes, but I do think it suits this academia style especially and it makes a yearly setup a little bit quicker to create. But anyway, after everything here, we are done with the future log and can move on to the next section, which will be all about the yearly goals. I am pretty intense about my goals and I always like to write down some at the beginning of the year so that I have that extra bit of accountability to myself. But before that, let's focus on the overall layout again. So we'll make yet another Dutch door. This is the last one in this setup, I promise. And I wanted to cover both of the edge pages with brown papers. I used this slightly darker regular craft paper for the first page. And then I used this notebook paper to make these white boxes on them. I actually got out these pieces from my old notebook, but you could use any other paper too if you don't want to sacrifice a page for this. And then we'll again build some scrapbooky decorations around them. I tried to keep the decorations here pretty minimal again and leave lots of space for the big 2024 goals title. So after everything was glued to the page, I sketched out these serif style letters. If you want to see a full alphabet in this style for reference, you could for example google the font Georgia, which is a pretty good standard font in this style. Also, if you struggle to keep the long lines straight, you could always use a ruler to make everything a little bit more even. But I personally think that any small wobbles or inconsistencies will kind of blend in with the rest of the letters. In the end, I think the picture I chose here was a bit small, so I ended up adding a short quote here after filming and setting everything up that says small steps every day. I think it's filled up some of the empty space here a little bit. But then let's finally start to set up this middle page. So I wanted to start with something new for me, which is this this year section where I wrote down a few prompts that I mainly found from the internet. So I used the same lowercase title style, but made the letters a little bit smaller so that they fit here in this upper corner. And I thought these prompts were such a fun idea. So we have a bad habit I'm gonna break, a new skill I'd like to learn, a hobby I wanna start or bring back, a book I'd like to read, a place I'd like to visit, and I'm gonna do better at. Feel free to use these or something similar in your yearly setups. I thought these added a little twist to the regular yearly goals that I usually set. And it's fun to see how many of these I'm gonna achieve this year. But then let's flip to the other side and here I'm gonna just list some simple work goals and life goals. I used this brown paper to write the titles on and then we are just gonna cut them while leaving a small edge to the letters. 
I was kind of switching between these cursive and typewriter style fonts in this video because I thought only using one of them would have been a little bit too much repetition. And when it comes to these goals sections, I like to first give myself just a few lines to write some overall thoughts about what I want to focus on this year. And then I give myself 10 bullet points to list some measurable action steps. We still have this one page here before moving on and we'll first add a few decorations again but I really wanted this box to be a little bit more functional than the first one so I'll use this to list a few things I want to have more time to do. I think we all have those things that we wish we had more time to do so I think listing them up will give a little boost of motivation to find that time from somewhere. For example, I know that if I procrastinated less, got all my work done more efficiently and said no to things I don't actually want to do, I would have much more free time on my hands. But anyway, after this page is done, it finishes our whole scrapbooky yearly goal sections and then we can move on again. We have two more spreads to go, which are both quite functional. So next, something I always like to have in my monthly setups is a monthly budget tracker. I decided to try out a new layout here as well, which will fit on one spread and doesn't require writing any of the titles more than once. But first, we are starting with some decorations again. So I decided to go for this side shape from the light brown texture paper. We're gonna add some elements on top of this so it leaves most of the spread empty while still giving a pretty interesting shape to the whole space. So first things first, we need a big title here. It's always a bit tricky to draw them on two separate papers, but I try my best to keep all the lines clean. And yes, I absolutely sketched out the letters half and half on both of these papers. I don't really know what to say about the decorations here anymore because they are quite self-explanatory. So when everything's done, let's jump to the concept itself. So budget and money stuff in general is something that probably looks very different for everyone. I am a full-time content creator who has a shop as well, so my income comes from a few different places, which is why I like to use these budget pages to list those up and calculate the totals every month. Then the savings section for me is to basically list how much money I have in my bank accounts. I still have a bank account in Finland too, where I pay my student loan from. And in general, I think listing these numbers helps me to compare what's coming in and what's going out every month. There will be quite a lot of numbers on this spread, so I thought it would be easier to tell things apart if we separate the lines with different colors. So I used this Tombow brush pen in the color sand, I believe, to highlight every second line from both of these sections and then divided the space into six different columns. You could absolutely write the monthly titles here like we did before on the future log page but I just wanted to show you the second option here of using these letter stamps. I got these from Paper World as well, they kindly gifted them to me and they are such a functional addition to my stationery collection. But that's it for the budget tracker and then let's flip over to the last full spread of this yearly setup. So next we are going to do something completely new for me and set up a monthly reset page. I've seen quite a few people including this kind of page in their yearly setups and I was immediately intrigued. So basically this is a list of tasks that will help you to transition into a new month. This whole spread will be quite full and very functional, so I kept the decorations at the minimum and just added these borders to the top and bottom and used the same title style as we did on the previous spread. But anyway, I decided to divide the habits here into work or mindfulness and then cleaning stuff. I came up with quite a few of them, so I used the same brush pen method to make it easier to see which row we are on, and then I used the third possible method to write out the months, which was using these letter stickers from my shop. 
The habits themselves can be anything that works for you. I listed some stuff that I always need to do at the end of each month and that will kind of help me prepare for the month ahead. Looking at this list now, I feel like I would be on top of the world if I could keep up with these habits every month. And I really hope that having them all written out like this will help me to be a little bit more intentional about getting them done as well. But now we have only this one page left, which I'll be using for my monthly knitting updates. I didn't include this in my previous yearly setup, but I ended up wishing I did. So here we go. Knitting has become such a dear hobby for me over the past two years or so. I love to do it while watching TV or YouTube to wind down at night or before starting to work in the mornings. And I just wanted to have a little bit of space to write some process updates every month. I definitely don't have time to finish too many projects per year, but it's still nice to see the progress and how long it took to get something done. And if knitting is not a hobby for you, I think this same layout could be used for pretty much anything else that you kind of want to track. I used the same stamps here again and no one noticed that the number three is upside down, okay? <laughs> I was too lazy to fix it, so we'll roll with it. And then lastly, I added this small flip box to the top of the page where I can list all my current works in progress or whips as people tend to call them in the knitting world. But that's finally all for my 2024 yearly setup. I feel like I've been talking for 10 years straight, but I'm so happy how this turned out. I can't wait to start using it, especially the new budget layout and the monthly reset pages makes me so excited. And I hope you got some new ideas from this video as well. I promise we'll do more painting and drawing in the upcoming videos and I think I'll post the January setup in a week or so. If this was your first time around here and you'd like to stay tuned for more art and journaling, definitely consider subscribing. But I guess that's it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye!